Hello my friends, and welcome back to the video series where we showcase new and noteworthy Half-Life Alex mods. Quite a variety of mods in this batch, from new maps, to custom game modes, to wacky things that can spice up the original campaign. Let's get started with the custom maps. Escape from City 17's Prison, Chapter 1 Alex is stuck in prison, and then suddenly, one evening, all the cells got opened and the prisoners tried to escape. All the other prisoners have been killed by the Combine, and now it's your turn to try and escape. This level does a good job at staying consistent to its own theme, because as you escape, you'll see the aftermath of all the other prisoners attempting to escape before you did. This level is honestly pretty easy, mostly because you're given tons of ammo and explosives, but still a lot of fun. A realistically designed and detailed prison break map. I beat it in about 20 minutes. Backyard resting. Alex is enjoying some well-earned personal time out in a small shack somewhere in City 17. But unfortunately, the Combine decide to interrupt and ruin it. Backyard resting has very challenging gameplay. I died a lot in this map. You're left to maneuver around zombies in tight spaces, and areas where Combine can come at you from multiple directions. It also features an especially cruel poison head crab trap. It's an all around nice little map. I beat it in about 20 minutes. Have you ever wanted to first hand send people into eternal damnation? Well, now you can with Push People Into Hell. An array of buttons surround you that allow you to spawn 13 different NPCs, as well as decide what kind of scream they should have while they plummet down the pit. I can honestly say I've never played anything like it before. In Antlion Arena, you play as a Combine soldier fighting side by side with your fellow comrades, and all of you are defending an outpost surrounded by three Antlion nests. Defend the outpost no matter what it takes. The starting area of the map gives you all the resin and ammo you could ever ask for, so upgrading your guns and getting ready will be no problem. Once you approach the perimeter of the outpost, the antlion attack will begin. I think the coolest part of this map is a working strider, and the fact that you're on the same side makes it even more awesome. Defend the outpost as long as you can, but you might eventually get overwhelmed. Personally, I survived for about 20 minutes. Mindbreak Chapter 2 is, obviously, the follow-up to Mindbreak Chapter 1. This continuation actually stands on its own quite well, so there's no requirement to play the original, but I do recommend playing the first one as well because it's really good. Chapter 2 starts out with you traversing the very heart of an antlion nest, eventually finding your way out through a combine base, and ending up in a sewer system with water up to your knees. The entire level is comprised of original environments I haven't seen before. This level is truly unique and visually refreshing. I found the antlion nest to be surprisingly difficult. Acid antlions always kick my butt. I beat it in about 30 minutes, and I highly recommend it. Escape Room, The Office. You knew it was bound to happen. We now have our first legit escape room within Half-Life Alex. You start in just one office room, but it'll eventually expand into even more rooms. 
The physics and interactivity with props in this game really translate well into an escape room. I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this. However, I did find this incredibly difficult to solve. After 40 minutes, I was completely stumped. Give this a try and let me know if you're able to escape. Brewery Breakin. One year before the events of Half-Life Alex, 18-year-old Alex Vance is assigned to investigate a brewery under Combine control. Why do the Combine love beer so much? Alex is going to find out. This level is relatively short at about 15 minutes, but it's totally worth your time. Lots of custom set pieces with creative level design make this place feel like a legit brewery. It features custom lighting and coloring effects. The contrast is much brighter, and you can really notice it during the flashlight scenes. There's also a custom pistol, which does make sense in the story because chronologically, this is way before Russell gives Alex the gun from the main campaign. Between the tight corridors with barnacles, good combine fights, and electricity puzzles, it's a great little map. I hope this gets expanded further in the future, and I recommend it. GoldenEye 64 Facility You may have watched my recent Let's Play of this map. It's a recreation of the classic facility level from GoldenEye on the N64. I had a ton of fun playing this map. I got lots of nostalgia from the original soundtrack and familiar level layout. But it also feels fresh, with some creative design decisions that the mod author made. And what's really awesome is that they're planning to recreate more levels from GoldenEye as well. I did occasionally get some performance issues, but they weren't too bad. I got about an hour of playtime out of this, and if you played the original, then you simply must play this. While I greatly loved the GoldenEye map for its nostalgia, Deep Inside is my favorite original map on this list. Most notable about the map is an ingeniously designed Jeff encounter. This encounter features puzzles to manipulate and avoid Jeff in new ways that weren't in the original game. It really had me thinking about what to do, and the clever solutions are satisfying to discover. Of course you'll also face off against zombies in Combine, and I was happy to see zombie weak spots again. I think those are fun, and I wish we saw more of those in custom levels. This level is an absolute must play. You can beat it in about 30 minutes. The Lost Case is an ever-growing miniature campaign. Ah, oh, it's jammed. When the Combine shut down the quarantine zone, they must have tightened security. <coughs> okay, just throw the switch there. It all begins with Alex escaping captivity, and with Russell's help, she'll hopefully find safety. The mod author spliced voice lines from the original campaign for some of the plot points in this campaign, and overall it works pretty well. Thanks. This campaign has something for everybody. Claustrophobic zen areas, expansive open city battles, unique interiors, and much, much more. It's a great miniature campaign that's a lot of fun, and you can really tell that a lot of love was poured into this. This campaign is continually expanding. When I played, it was three levels long, and it took me about an hour and a half. It's fantastic fun. P.T. is a recreation of the original game by the same name. It's a psychological horror game that really plays with your mind, all with well-timed lighting effects and creepy audio. Playtime is about 20 minutes, and if you love a good spook, then I think you'll really enjoy this. X Zombies. You need to leave your safe hideout and fight your way through the zombie-infested parts of the quarantine zone. I found this to be surprisingly spooky. Lots of poison headcrabs, and the audio soundscape is mostly silent. I think I only heard one instance of music, and that was a brief reference to Ravenholm.
the silence is unsettling and it works well. There's a high number of resin bundles to allow you to upgrade your pistol and shotgun quite a bit, and I was happy to see zombie weak spots returning as well. It's a good small spooky map. Playtime is about 25 minutes. And now to cover three new game modes inside Half-Life Alex. Zenthug Boneworks Arena is a rough recreation of the arena combat map from Boneworks. Enemies drop resin, and your only source of ammo and health are the vending machines. Unfortunately, you can't actually grab and open the vending machine doors like you can in Boneworks. The way you purchase things is by walking into the orange handles, like a chest bump. It's an overall decent arena combat map, so even though I was disappointed by the vending machines, it's still a cool environment that presents a real challenge. Blop 17 Emergent Zombie Wave Survival is a fan-made recreation of the classic Call of Duty Zombies game mode built into an original map layout. It includes a point system, never-ending zombie waves, window barricades, unlockable map areas, and unlockable weapons. I found this really challenging. The difficulty is totally there, and you'll be struggling early on to buy enough ammo in new areas. It's a pretty cool nod to the classic Call of Duty Zombies games that can add a ton of play for you. The full potential of the gravity gloves is finally revealed in Northern Star Bowling. Enjoy a single bowling alley that even keeps track of your score as you play. It also automatically resets the pins and bowling ball, which is pretty handy. You can find G-Man working at the bar, but honestly, the service here is pretty terrible. He won't even look at me. If you've been dreaming about bowling in Half-Life Alex, your dream has finally come true. And finally, a few mods that can spice up the original campaign. JJ's Hardcore Difficulty mod increases the challenge on all difficulty levels in the main story campaign. Ammo is more rare, Combine Soldiers deal more damage and take less damage overall, Headshots in general deal more damage to most enemies. If you want more difficulty in the game, then this is your ticket. And thankfully, a recent update to Half-Life Alex now allows mods to remain in place in between level loads during the main campaign. Large hands will significantly increase your hand size during the main campaign. And the way that you hold the pistol is pretty funny. It's hard to tell if this actually makes any significant impact on gameplay. I kind of felt like it was easier to grab flying headcrabs, but that could just be in my head. Sometimes you'll see strange visual glitches depending on what items you grab, but most of the time it works pretty well. Do you long for those early 2000 era sound effects in your favorite VR game? Then this is your lucky day because Windows XP Pistol Sound Pack will replace every pistol sound with a Windows XP sound effect. The good old days. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya!